Plasmoids is a term often used by many in the electric universe to describe a plethora of phenomena. But what exactly are plasmoids? Let's find out. The term plasmoid was first coined in 1956 by Winston H. Bostick and he used it to describe a plasma magnetic entity. He first discovered this during experiments with plasma. When he fired plasma from a plasma gun, he discovered that the plasma was not projected as an amorphous blob as he had initially expected. In fact, what he discovered is that the plasma formed a structure which was dictated by its magnetic field. If the plasma is projected across a conducting media, so another plasma, electromagnetic braking action traps the lines of magnetic fields inside forming the plasmoid. Plasmoids can take on a variety of different shapes. In Bostick's original experiments, he actually found that the plasmoids were hollow cylinders that expanded outwards. In later experiments, he was able to produce toroidal shapes and other shaped plasmoids. The important thing to remember is that the plasmoid is a self-contained entity where the plasma and the magnetic fields are trapped inside of it. So the plasma cannot escape and the magnetic fields wrap around it, causing currents to flow inside of that structure. He speculated that as the plasmoids moved along, it was not stable and both its large and small radii would steadily increase and he likened this expansion to a magnetic explosion where most of the outward velocity is picked up when the plasmoid is small. Using this information, Bostick speculated that it would be possible to conceive of a more stable variant of the plasmoid, which he called the S-plasmoid. He speculated that ionized material ejected from the sun would escape along the magnetic field lines in the form of plasmoids. Now, In the laboratory, the plasmoids he was able to create were elongated hollow cylinders and he was able to combine several of them through a spiral to form a ring of plasma, a toroid. He discovered that they experience an electromagnetic braking action which decelerates and deflects them when they encounter one another. He experimented with the plasmoids and discovered that he was able to recreate several different types of galaxy formation by firing two plasmoids at each other across a magnetic field, the leading edges seem to connect and cause the rest to spiral around it. As he increased the pressure in the chamber, the plasmoid started to form a helix shape. Through his work, he was able to show that the plasmoids were able to latch onto each other, creating larger and larger structures. He also showed that depending on how the leading edge of the plasmoid was twisted, it could refuse this connection and actually end up repelling the other plasmoid. As these plasmoids join, their angular momentum would draw them out into a spiral. More incredible was that although these plasmoids were very short-lived in the lab, once they had reached the spiral galaxy shape, they remained in this shape for a period of time even though the original magnetic field had been removed, and this was a total surprise to Bostick. Bostick had seen that many of these plasmoids would eventually end up as a torus shape, but how could these cylinders form such a torus? In his experiment, it only took two cylinders fired at each other to produce a sustained torus shape. In later experiments, it would become apparent that as the plasmoid progressed, it would tend towards this toroidal shape. He documented many examples showing this formation. He also saw that when combining plasmoids, if he combined less of them to form the torus shape, that the total angular momentum of the shape would be less because obviously there would be less plasmoids. And what would happen in this case is that the torus would be partially inverted, creating a figure of eight shape. Bostick went on to compare the plasmoids he produced in the lab to the phenomena we observe in the cosmos. 
In his paper, he admits that when he conducted these experiments, he was not looking for this link to cosmological objects. In his experiments, the diameter he was creating was about 10 centimeters for the plasmoids. So it would need to be scaled up by a factor of 10 to the power of 22 to be comparable to a galaxy. Now he discusses in detail how each parameter from his experiment scales. Now considering a completely ionized region of space of about 10 to the 23 centimeters in diameter, statistical fluctuations in the density will produce centers of incipient gravitational attraction in regions where the density is somewhat higher than in the surrounding regions. These gravitational instabilities will cause clumps to form. Now this is very similar to Alvin's model of galaxy formations where effectively we have a large uh, gas cloud where random fluctuations will cause uh, a grouping together and that gravity will then start to take over. Now Alvin had already proposed the existence of intergalactic magnetic fields due to the movement of plasma along these filaments. So if we add this into Bostick's model, then it can easily be seen that this clumping action could happen very quickly indeed. Bostick assumes that the magnetic fields of these clump regions of higher density would, to a certain extent, inhibit the motion of plasma across the magnetic field. And instead, the plasma would move along the field lines of magnetic force, just as in Alvin's model we have discussed in previous videos. And this will cause the plasma to be compressed, forming a lenticular shape. And again, this is exactly the same as in Alvin's model. You end up with uh, uh, the plasma being compressed into a disc shape. Now, as the plasma moves inwards, it will feel an electromagnetic breaking force slowing it down and causing a series of plasma jets which will then become plasmoids to move across the magnetic field lines and from his observations he notes that when there are only two jets the galaxy forms a barred spiral galaxy but when there are several jets it forms an armed spiral galaxy Normally, in the lab, these plasmoids would eventually die out once the magnetic field is removed, but he calculated that given the charge in the spiral arms and its motion, this could lead to a regenerative dynamo action, causing the magnetic field to grow in time as the gravitational energy is transformed into magnetic energy. The electromotive force which drives the current along the arms towards the center of the galaxy is strictly analogous to the electromotive force which must exist in the laboratory barred spiral where the configuration can be observed to rotate in the magnetic field. Now if the magnetic dipole of the galaxy continues to rise in magnitude as more and more material gets pulled in any electrically conducting material like plasma in the neighborhood will have induced within it currents whose magnetic field will be repelled by the galaxy. And if this plasma represents another galaxy in proximity to itself, it will be repelled. He actually goes on to calculate based on the standard magnetic field strength for a galaxy and assuming that the volume occupied by the magnetic field is about 25 times that of the size of the galaxy itself, each galaxy would convert some of its magnetic energy into kinetic energy. And this would cause both galaxies to move away from each other with a velocity of at least 100 kilometers per second. And this would be the lower limit of this value. For more mature galaxies, this would be much, much higher. He actually points out that this could be the very reason galaxies are moving away from each other. Those on the periphery would feel a greater force and therefore would be traveling faster. Now this is a really interesting idea that I have not heard of before in the electric universe and may be another key to explaining the motions of galaxies. Now there are examples of what we think are galaxies merging but again, going back to his observations in the lab, 
it was possible for him to cause the, the plasmoids to join under certain circumstances and to not join in other circumstances. Now we also know that galaxies are formed in much larger filaments. The question is, what we don't know is whether they follow that motion of the filament. We certainly know for stars that they do, so it's a reasonable assumption that they will do within the greater filament as well. But again, this mechanism could explain to some extent why the majority of galaxies are moving away from us. Now what I particularly like about Bostick's work is that he combines his ideas with Alvin's ideas. The motions of the current in the galaxy are the same as Alvin's galactic circuit. In this model he also uses gravitation to cause the initial collapse and you have the transfer of gravitational energy into kinetic rotation and magnetic energy as well. Now it is equally possible that this initial collapse could have been caused by a z-pinch in the intergalactic filament, but this is something that we will come back to in future videos. In the next episode we will take this concept of a plasmoid and use it to explain quasars and black holes. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.